In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic don't destroy onload script. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a new script and call it don't destroy and then open it up in Visual Studio. So at its bare bones, all you have to do is type don't destroy onload and feed it the parameter of game object. And that's it. So let's save and head back into Unity. And we'll go ahead and try this out. In this case, we'll try it on this colonial ship and just drag and drop it into its inspector. OK, so let's see how this looks in play mode. We'll go into another scene and you can't see it right now because this is in a box, but yep, it's still there. There's one problem. If we go back into the scene, we'll see that now we have two ships. Every time we'll go back and forth, there's going to be another ship. And the reason for that is when Unity loads a scene, it loads everything in the hierarchy, which includes an original version of the ship and the one that wasn't destroyed from when we were here before. We don't want that. So let's go back into the script. And one way that we could handle this is the same way that we handled our player script in the last video and just make it an instance. That works fine there, but that's not what we want for this. So I'm going to copy and paste this into our script to show why. The problem is we want to be able to put this script on a different game object. So let's say we just want to put it on this palm tree. If we go into play mode and we check things out, we'll see that the palm tree is there, but the boat's gone. And if we go to the other scene, the palm tree is still there. And that's because only one game object can have this script for any scene. But we want to set this up so as many objects as we want can have it without interfering with each other. So the first thing that we're going to do is delete all of this. And we're going to replace it with object.findObjects of type don't destroy. All this will do is get a list of every object in the scene that has the don't destroy component on it. We're going to be copying and pasting this a lot, so we'll just keep that there for now. And we're going to run through it with a for loop, which I'm going to copy and paste from the internet because I'm too lazy to memorize it. There will be a link to that in the description. And then we'll control X or object.findLine and replace num enemies with that dot length. And then get rid of the debug line and replace that with if copy and paste object dot find again at position i dot name is equal to name ignore the game object i forgot you don't need that and then inside of the curly brackets we're going to say destroy game object problem with that is that this game object has the same name so it'll destroy itself so what we're going to do is go above this and say if copy and paste the object dot find again at position i is not equal to this and then inside of the curly brackets, we're going to control X, what we previously wrote, and put that in. Then we'll save and go back into Unity. And if we try this out in play mode, we can see in the hierarchy that the boat's still there. We can walk around here, palm tree's still there, and everything looks good. Except there's one more problem. What if I want to preserve two different game objects with the same exact name? So exiting play mode, I'm just going to duplicate the palm tree game object, and I'm going to name both of the trees tree. Going back into play mode, we'll see that it actually destroys both of them. We don't want that. So let's go back into the script. What we're going to do is we're going to give them an ID. So let's type out public string object ID. And within our center if statement, let's switch out both name variables with object ID. And then we're actually going to go above our start function and say void awake. And we're going to make it so this string is equal to name plus transform dot position to string. Let's go back into the game and see how that looks. And there you go. As you can see, everything's working perfectly. Go into the other scene, trees are still there, go back, everything's good. You could take this a step further and add the Eulier angles to the string as well, but most of the time that shouldn't be necessary. There's two final things that we're gonna do. If you have a moving game object like our ship, its ID is always gonna be different, so we'll have the same problem before with the duplicating ship. Easiest way to fix this is just make it a child object of a game object that isn't moving, and then drag and drop the component onto that parent object. And finally, we don't actually want to see the game object's ID in the inspector. So going back to our script one last time, we'll just go above the object ID and type square brackets hide in inspector. And there you have it. You now have a don't destroy script that you can put on as many game objects as you want without them ever interfering with each other. Thank you so much for watching, see you next time.